So long, brothers and sisters. My name is Jonathan, making a quick video to help everybody understand how important these the feast days are and and the covenant words that we must live by to in order so, to be Yahuwah's children. Oh, I'm just so grateful for this time I get. Well, um, here it goes. I'm going to go to Hosea 9, 3 to 5. And it says, They shall not dwell in the land of Yahuwah, but Ephraim will return to Mitzrayim and eat uncleanness in a shusher. They do not pour wine offerings to Yahuwah, nor are their offerings pleasing to him. It being like bread of mourners to them, all who eat it are defiled. For their bread is for their life. It does not come into the house of Yahuwah. What kind of bread are they eating, you know? So, and then number five says, What do you do for the appointed meeting? And in the day of the festival of Yahuwah, it's like a, it's questioning saying, what do you do for the appointed meetings that are found in Leviticus 23, right? And and for the festivals of Yahuwah, see, they're not, they're sent, they're going to send back into Mitzrayim because they're not obeying Yahuwah's word, right? They're celebrating other, other feast days that are not feast days at all, but abominations, okay? Like Christmas, uh, Easter and um, the list goes on, right? All the feast days that are not found in Leviticus 23 pretty much are probably celebrating abominations, right? So we got to get rid of those feast days and obey the covenant words that are found in Leviticus 23, right? And proclaim them as Kodesh gatherings, set apart gatherings. Come on, Israel. All right, Nahum 1, 13 to 15 says, So now I break his yoke from you and tear off your shackles, right? And Yahuwah has commanded concerning you, Your name shall no longer be sown from the house of your mighty ones. I shall cut off the carved images, and the carved image and the molded image. I shall appoint your grave. For you have been of no account. It's talking to Belial, right? Which is Nimrod. You see, ba um, Babylon is getting tore back. You know, right here is getting is getting judgment on it. So, and now it says number fifteen, Nahum one fifteen says, "See the mountain of the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace. O Yahuda, observe your festivals, perform your vows." For Belial, that means wickedness and worthlessness, is like Nimrod, right? Shall no more pass through you. He has been cut off completely. So now that this the, the enemy's cut off, he was the one that was preventing us from keeping our vows and performing our festivals, performing our vows and keeping the festivals, right? So this is Babylon system is going to prevent you from keeping the word of Yahuwah. You know, that's what, that's what Mitzrayim is, is bondage, right? Egypt is just bondage with um, other false gods and all these. That's why we, gotta, we must know the name of the Creator to be able to be pleasing to Him because his name is Yahuwah, yod heh wah -Hey. Pronounce it however you want. I'm going to pronounce it Yahuwah. And his son, Yahushua, he has come to bring us back into covenant. Right? Because we had, we had uh, transgressed covenant and broke covenant and we were divorced. Right? So now I'm going to read from... I'm going to read this real quick. Uh, Yahuwah speaks through the prophet Isaiah of how his plan was to remarry the house of Israel and bring his estranged wife back and restore her completely, right? So Isaiah 54, 54, 5 through 8 says, 
for your maker is your husband, Yahuwah, of hosts is his name, and the set apart one of Israel is your Redeemer. He is called the Elohim of all the earth. For Yahuwah has called you like a woman, forsaken and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when you were refused, declares your Elohim. For a little while I have forsaken you, but with great compassion I shall gather you. In an overflow of wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness I shall have compassion on you, said Yahuwah, your Redeemer. See, and Yahushua means Yahuwah is our Redeemer. So it's just amazing to me how important it is to know who you're calling upon. Because Satan was found pride in his heart. And he wanted to be as Yahuwah. So he came down and created all these cults and religions. And uh, the, and if they're not calling on Yahuwah and observing his ways. They're calling on someone else. Which say it's the adversary. You know the adversary is um, anybody that is not Yahuwah. Right? So... Um, I just, just now, I was just looking at the, my Facebook, and I saw that the cup, hold on, it's in Revelation, the cup of the woman, uh, Mystery Babylon, that has many blasphemous names, you know, all those blasphemous names are the names of all these other mighty ones that aren't Yahuwah, right? So don't drink from that cup, just boom, drink from your the cup of Yahuwah in obedience to his word, to the covenant words. We've got to rightly divide the covenant words and um, keep the feast days from the Levitical priesthood, what they had to do for their transgression. They didn't have Messiah to it, you know. So now Messiah has come and he established the uh, a new priesthood. It's the Melchizedek priesthood. And uh, I am so grateful for this time that I get to proclaim his goodness in my life and in everybody's life because because Yahuwah has took, an, uh, took us out with a mighty hand that, out of Mitraim and we are just so grateful now that we have to keep his word and start um, washing ourselves in the water of his word to understand all these things I am just uh, so grateful for the other people in the way that are out there proclaiming and showing the light of um, exposing uh, the wickedness and, and, and these other festivals like Christmas and Easter and uh, Valentine's Day, I don't know, all of them. Um, it's because for a lot, of, you know, we love Yahuwah. I, for, I always loved Yah Yahuwah, but I didn't know what it meant to love him until I started reading his word and started doing it the way he wants me to do it. Keeping the Shabbat day holy. He made the earth and he made the, the, the creation in six days and on the seventh he rested. Bam! That's, and he sanctified it. So six days we work and on the seventh day, oh that's a, a covenant day right there. Between us and our Creator, Yahuwah and His children. So I, I'm so grateful for it because it's such a blessing to my life. And um, just wanted to make a quick video. I don't even know if I read that. A uh, quick video of why we gotta keep doing the the on um, the feast days. I'm serving His vows, right? And okay, in Isaiah nine, three to five. Man, I don't even know if I read it. They shall not dwell in the land of Yahuwah, but Ephraim shall return to Mitraim and eat unclean and a sh uncleanness and a shusher. They do not pour wine offerings to Yahuwah, nor, nor are their offerings pleasing to him. It being like bread of mourners to them, all who eat it are defiled, for their bread is for their life. It does not come from the house of Yahuwah. What do you do for the appointed meeting? And in the days of the festivals of Yahuwah? 
is telling us. So if we're not giving these feast days and and um, hey, what up? If we're not giving the feast days of Yahuwah, we're eating bread that is not pleasing to Yahuwah, you know? And and that's and this is for our lives. So it's asking us right here, what are you doing? <laughs> what do you do for the appointed meaning? And in the day of the festivals of Yahuwah, it's like a question saying like, bam, you better get back to it, you know? Because the enemy is trying to keep us away from keeping our vows, which are the Ten Commandments. And uh, and the feast days, which is a redemption plan hidden in these feast days. And we are just so grateful that all this is being revealed right now through Messiah's people. And all everybody that is rising up and claiming, um, proclaiming Yahuwah's word. Shalom! <laughs> Much love.